if you haven't heard or seen, there's this thing called Michigan's Uncommitted Campaign. So there's a campaign for people to write in uncommitted in the Democratic primary next week. Rashida recently joined that and promoted it. Like she tweeted out saying, you know, on the steps, she was on the steps of uh, somewhere, Congress or something. And she was talking about this, hey, register your discontentment, basically, in the primary Make you know, join this uncommitted campaign where you literally are going to be writing the words uncommitted instead of voting for any candidate, right? So, there's a couple of things to know about this. One, um, the mainstream media is very, very upset about this, they're talking about Rashida Tlaib joining this campaign. On uh, so there's a lot of video co- footage of it. Um, and there's some articles too. This is one of them right here. I'll read a little bit. Uh, this year with Democrats looking vulnerable in swing states, such as Georgia and Nevada, and perhaps Arizona, the blue wall is more crucial than ever. Unfortunately for Biden, while he looks to reasonably, uh, while he looks to be reasonably strong in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, he's being consistent. He's been consistently losing to Trump in Michigan polls for months, sometimes by as much as eight to 10 points. Biden's weakness with Arab American voters, young voters and others who support a ceasefire in Gaza is seen as a key explanation for why he's having trouble this year in Michigan, a state he carried in 2020 by more than a 1,050, 150,000 votes and where Democrats control the governorship and state legislators. Um, so actually I'm not going to read that part because there's a video that's going to talk about Levin, who's another rep who's joining this. So, um, now let's get to the, uh, video coverage and then some of the reaction here. So let's get to the video coverage of this. Um, this is, uh, Amen Adin. I think that's how you say his name. He covers it. Let's listen to his reporting. We're not. It's a nine minute segment. We're not going to watch all of all of this segment, but there's a good chunk of it we're going to watch because it, it contains a lot of just uh, foundational foundational information for uh, uh, this conversation. Um, now there is abandon Biden, which I would say wholeheartedly support. This uncommitted is a little bit suspect. Because as we go through some of this information, you'll see how they're talking about uncommitted as a way of just showing your discontentment in the primary and then coming back and voting for Joe Biden in the general. That is the point of view for the people who's pushing this uncommitted. It's not the same strategy as the people who are pushing abandoned Biden. They're saying abandon Biden in the general election. This uncommitted is sort of a trying to take some of that energy, let people be all upset during the primary, and then come back and vote for Joe Biden, genocide, genocide Joe in the general. So understand, in my, in my purview, uncommitted is a psyop by social Democrats. Get all your anger out in the primaries. Isn't that what they're always saying? Isn't that what they said about Marianne Williamson? Show your, register your anger in the primary. Register your anger about the genocide in the primary, but then come back and vote for him in the general. Let's listen to this uh, uh, segment here with, I think his, you say his name is Amen. Amen. A new effort is underway in Michigan ahead of the state's February 27th presidential primary. Our Revolution, a progressive political organization, has called on voters to cast their ballot against President Joe Biden in the upcoming day. Our Revolution tips you off that this is a PSYOP. Our Revolution is Bernie Sanders' old gig. 
our revolution have fell in line with the Democratic Party and social <coughs> social Democrats, just like the Sam Cedars and the Majority Reports and the TYTs. So that's a tip off that this is a psyop. Our revolution is heading it. A new effort is underway in Michigan ahead of the state's February 27th presidential primary. Our Revolution, a progressive political organization, has called on voters to cast their ballot against President Joe Biden in the upcoming Democratic primary, urging them to select uncommitted instead. The group hopes the move will send the president a message and shift the administration's approach. You see, they're trying to send him a message. As if the protest is not sending him a message, sir, and people. So they want to register a message. Get it out of your system. Get all your anger out in the primary. And then we have to go save democracy together. Send your message. This is so social democratic. It's so like. Whereas, like I was describing early, earlier, it is so like a not a real attempt at trying to do anything. It is just literally saying words. Um, anyway, I'll have more to say about that in, uh, later as we go. But let's let's listen some more approach to the war in Gaza. Saturday, Democratic Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib voiced her support for a similar effort from another group called Listen to Michigan. Biden's erosion of support in this state is a subject of concern for his reelection campaign. According to census data, Michigan has roughly 310,000 residents with Middle Eastern or North African ancestry, and Arab Americans can account for as much as 5% of the vote in the state, depending on turnout. New polling shows Donald Trump narrowly leads the president in the key battleground state by just two points. With numbers that close, though, Democrats are sounding the alarm, warning Joe Biden's handling of the war could cause voters in this crucial bloc to sit out in the November election. One local activist from Dearborn told USA Today, quote, it is time for the president to take action, and he is failing to do so, and that's going to have political consequences. Explaining his reasoning for backing our revolution's uncommitted effort, former former Michigan Democratic Congressman Andy Levin told the New York Times, quote, I'm working with some people who feel like they will never vote for Joe Biden, but there are many, many, many I feel will vote for the president on November 5th if he changes course. This is the best way I can help Joe Biden. Former Congressman Andy Levin joins me now. Uh, Congressman, former Congressman Levin, it's great to see you again. Thank you so much for uh, making time. So this is one of the major people behind this or helping this movement. And, and you hear what he says. This is him attempting to help Biden. This is a Biden person. He will be voting for Biden. But this former rep sees the pain in these communities in Dearborn, for example, in Michigan. And he said, no, Dryden, you need to do something because they're not going to come out. So he's trying to say, come on, guys. let's." It's like, and this is what social Democrats do. They did this with Marianne Williamson. It's like, no, we're not about to go through these emotions with you that we told you already was going to happen if you decide to run with the Democratic Party. Oh, they're not doing a debate? We told you that. You think we're about to go through this sad emotion with you? We're not going through these steps with you, sir or ma'am. That's what we were telling Marianne Williamson Kemp. But this is the same thing. They want to bring you through the 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 emotional step so that it when it's time to get to step seven which is vote for genocide joe you have to go through the emotions in order to get there so this uncommitted is an attempt to do that to bring people who are disaffected by this policy uh, by genocide joe to bring those take those people through these emotional steps so that they can eventually vote for joe biden Listen to a lot uh, to what this guy says and tell me that's not what you're gleaming from this. 
taking time. And I actually want to start there. Um, you're framing this vote as a way to help Joe Biden ahead of November. Uh, some Michigan Democrats, including the state's governor, Gretchen Whitmer, have cautioned that whipping support against Joe Biden could and will backfire. Explain to our viewers why you don't believe that's the case. Well, it's great to see you, Eamon. And first of all, Governor Whitmer is a co-chair of the president's re-election campaign. She's doing a great job and she's you know, playing her role very well. But here's the situation. Joe Biden needs to do this for two reasons. And I have to say the first one is about substance, right? What is happening is horrifying in Gaza. The situation on the West Bank is terrible. Both Israelis and Palestinians are completely traumatized. And so this president, who I was so proud to make so much progress with on domestic policy and who has done such a terrific job there, can be a great foreign policy president if he changes course, really changes course, gets a permanent ceasefire in Gaza and opens up the biggest diplomatic initiative of his presidency to at long last allow the Palestinian people to have self-determination along with the Jewish people having self-determination there together. Somehow it's difficult, but sharing, deciding, they decide, not us. They decide how to share that land democratically. And so here, the political situation though, Amen, is this. It's not our revolution or listen to Michigan, like whipping this up. People are not going to vote for Joe Biden on February 27th because they are really mad at him. Their cousins are dying. Their friend, you know, their friends are dying. And it's not just Arab Americans. You're right, we are the densest Arab American state. We also have 250,000 Muslims in Michigan. We have 1.4 million African Americans. And you just saw the AME bishops going even farther um, in saying that we ought to su suspend military, all aid to Israel, military mm -hmm. aid to Israel. And then you've got 370 some thousand 18 to 24 year old voters, all of whom are very upset. Now there's, these are somewhat overlapping groups, right? Right. But, Amen. Joe Biden won Michigan by 150,000 votes in 2020. We need these people right. to vote for Joe Biden on November 5th. Yeah, you need and that. So Got to get them. Yeah, yeah, you need you need that coalition, and and obviously we're starting to feel the pressure. So, tell me how this makes sense. If this is a genuine thing, this is why I said this is a psyop. The guy who's part or not the organizer, but being a leading voice in this, the of this supposed uncommitted meaning you are registering your discontent for what he's saying. He's saying we need these people to come out and vote for Joe Biden in November. How can both of those be true? How can you be over uncommitted, part of uncommitted, pushing this uncommitted campaign at the same time saying the people who are going to be coming out saying uncommitted are the people Joe must come out and vote for Joe Biden. This is such a psyop. They're trying to take the people who would otherwise join and abandon Biden movement, which is abandon him in a general election, and peel some of those people off to, to let them uh, put their frustrations and their anger out in the primary. Truly, uh, just th these people will go to any lengths. They, they literally uh, do not care. They do not care. Um, but I do want to get to some other video, uh, and right in the line, right in row. Here goes this next video where they talk about it. Um, let's listen to this one. This one's three minutes long. So for months, the Arab and Muslim communities in Muswin, Michigan have said they are angry with the Biden administration over the president's repeated refusal to call for a ceasefire in Gaza. And in a video posted on X, Democratic Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib encouraged them to bring those criticisms to the ballot box during next Tuesday's primary. Right now, we feel completely neglected, neglected and just unseen by our government. If you want us to be louder, then come here and vote uncommitted. Joining us now, NBC News correspondent Dasha Burns to talk more about this. This is something they want to drive home. They want this point to be made mm -hmm. to the Biden administration because they want them to make a decision about what's happening between Israel and Gaza. They're calling for essentially a ceasefire. 
by leveling this um, vote of uncommitted. What mm -hmm. more are we learning about these efforts and how much Michiganders are on board with it, especially right. the Arab American community? Well, Tlaib is joining a wider effort to do this uncommitted vote. And to be clear, this isn't an effort to sideline Biden from the nomination. It's not an effort to hurt him in November. It's an effort to make their voices heard. She went on to say in that video that it's important to create. You see? This is not an effort to hurt him in November. They just want to make your voices heard. How are your voices heard if your voice does not affect the election? It's this, th this is what the social democracy and Democrats do. Telling you your voice is heard by, by, uh, vote, by, not, by voting uncommitted in a primary that's rigged for Joe Biden. What are you talking about? This is so terrible that these these social Democrats, man, they will come up with any plan to bring your ass back to the plantation. Create a voting block, something that is a bullhorn to say enough is enough. And it's particularly powerful in Michigan because this is a state with a large Arab American population. They have not been happy with how the Biden administration has handled this. And remember, Michigan is a must win for Biden. He yeah. won it by a very small margin in 2020. Trump won it in 2016. And they're going to Michigan to say, hey, we actually have power in a state like this. We could make an impact. So you got to listen. Can we talk about the impact here? Yeah. Because when you think about the Arab American vote, right? I believe in 2020, the turnout was 146,000 to 200,000 um, Arab American or Muslim American voters. I mean, they turn out. They turn out, they can make a difference when the margins are really slim in states where they tend to be like Michigan. Um, the other factor is young progressives, young even if they're not Arab Americans, young activist Democratic voters who also uh, you know, do tend to turn out are not thrilled with how the Biden administration is handling this. They aren't necessarily going to go vote for Trump, but they might not vote for Biden because of this. So, but he's in a tough spot because look, he would also anger a whole other demographic of people if he decided, you know, we're not supporting Israel anymore. So he's walking a really fine line here. Um, White House officials did visit Michigan earlier this month to speak with- but The um, president didn't go. The president didn't go. He went for an auto workers thing, but um, you know, they are, right. they are taking this seriously. But at this point, they are starting to see a, a number of demographics, whether it's Arab Americans, young voters, black voters, start to get sort of chipped away at, and that is not a good position to be in. Is right there now. any indication the former president is trying to seize on this yes. fissure, this this kind of fracture that we're seeing? Yes, all of my sources in Trump world, they're watching this. Again, they're watching the black vote, they're watching the Hispanic vote, and they're seeing Biden's numbers go down, and they're trying to capitalize on that. Dasha Burns, thank you. Like, if, if Trump was smart, all Trump would have to do is have so an opposite So for months, view. the Arab and Muslim communities in must win Michigan have said. Trump just cease fire, you know how many people he would get? Like, if he just made that calculation, similar to how he made the calculation with Ukraine, although now that is a firmly a, a, a uh, Republican position. So, um... Oh, here we go. Okay, uh, this is the next one here. All right, let's watch this one. This is I do want to ask you former about, rep, one of the twins from Texas, um, speaking on the same uh, topic. Let's. Sorry, listen. I do want to ask you about we. You and I have talked about Israel and, and Hamas, and I, I want to ask you about some of the growing tensions in the Democratic Party over this issue. Uh, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib of Michigan, one of your fellow progressives, she's urging Democrats to vote uncommitted in her state's uh, primary next week, rather than a uh, vote for President Biden. Let's listen to a little bit of this talk about on the other side. It is also important to create a voting block, something that is a bullhorn to say enough is enough. We don't want a country that supports war, wars and bombs and destruction. If you want us to be louder, then come here and vote uncommitted. And Congressman, I know you've expressed your concerns about how the Israeli military is conducting itself uh, in Gaza. Uh, but as Democrats head into this rematch with Donald Trump, are you concerned about this divide in the Democratic Party, this potential for votes to be siphoned off of American Democrats, per perhaps to stay home in places like Michigan? 
all of this stemming over this uh, or from this uh, divide in the Democratic Party over the war between Israel and Hamas? Yeah, I mean, I think if we're speaking realistically, there certainly is uh, that potential. There's the potential that young people, young Democrats are not going to come out in the numbers that you need them to to win in close states. Uh, so, yeah, of course, it's a concern. Uh, and I have said that I disagree with the way that Benjamin Netanyahu's government is prosecuting uh, this war. Uh, at this point, uh, Jim, uh, you know, he, they're essentially uh, beating a dead horse, so to speak. They are uh, pulverizing a people who have already been uh, bombarded. Hospitals have been bombarded, uh, ambulance convoys, people's homes. Uh, thousands and thousands of children have died. And the Netanyahu government is made up of several extremists who are pushing this policy. Benjamin Netanyahu himself has a very selfish incentive to keep the war going because it's clear from polls that the Israeli people are basically done with Benjamin Netanyahu as soon as this war is over. So he's got a very selfish incentive to keep this war going. But in the meantime, while he's doing that, people are suffering uh, and Israel is not gaining much from the suffering of the Palestinian people. And the greatest danger to Israel uh, is, is not Hamas. Hamas obviously committed an atrocious massacre on October 7th, and I believe that they committed war crimes in what they did. Uh, at the same time, Hamas does not have a navy. Hamas doesn't have nuclear weapons. Hamas is not the greatest military threat to Israel. The greatest military threat to Israel is to allow Benjamin Netanyahu to continue doing what he's doing, which would spark a regional war or regional conflict with states like Iran and actors like Hezbollah uh, and the Houthis and others who basically gang up on Israel. That would also draw the United States into a larger war. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I support a ceasefire. I support efforts at a peace agreement that brings the hostages back from Gaza to Israel. Um, but so far, you've got somebody in Benjamin Netanyahu who basically has no incentive to do those things. He doesn't talk on I, I do the issue about, because we, I think he asked him about Rashida and he goes on the tangent about just what's happening. That's the space he feel comfortable right now. The green light in this space for people who are progressives is it's okay to you can talk about this Israel being bad in the sense that it's because it's Netanyahu's Israel, and that's where he feels comfortable. That and he didn't feel comfortable at all talking about Rashida Tlaib. Now, remember, I said our revolution. It kind of tips you off that our revolution is this is a psyop because our revolution is running it. Let's read this tweet from Glenn Greenwald. This is Glenn. He says, you're going to see the vast majority of left media start switching from Joe Biden is enabling, financing and arming a genocide. You're going to see those people who are saying that now, the social Democrats. They're going to pivot to, look, we have our problems with Biden, but it's imperative that you vote for him. They're all calculating the best time to shift. Here is our revolution. You talking about the uncommitted? Let's read this part. It's worth noting our revolution cave, while they encourage people to vote uncommitted now, they would be back in Genocide Joe in November. Look, let's read this right here. The group did make clear, though, that while it's pushing its members to vote against Biden now, it will back him in again in November. Quote, our revolution supporters can push Biden to change course on Gaza now and increase his chances of winning Michigan in November because we must defeat the right wing Trump agenda and email to supporters from our revolution. The story came out, our revolution was behind this shit. And the shit hit the fan and said, oh, 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 no, 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 no. We're not doing all of this kind of crazy shit, okay? So like I said, the uncommitted campaign, this is literally a psyop to get you to 
release all your anger in the primaries before we want you to come out and vote for him. A psyop. 